So, hi everyone. Um, we have software engineering and computer science, and I'm Alex Hunton. And I'm Keon Davidi. All right. All right. So we're going to start off the presentation with a short two-minute video uh, by this woman, and she's going to detail her day-to-day -day life as a software developer at a, a small company. And we're just going to watch that to get some insight, general insight on what software developers do uh, in day-to-day -day work. As an intern, I had never played pool before, but it became one of the things that I loved to do here almost every day, and I actually got kind of decent at it. Maybe not today. <laughs> I'm Karen Zoller. I'm a junior software developer, and we are here at Highland. A junior software developer is an entry-level developer position, which basically means I write code. So maybe I will find a bug in our software and I'll fix it, or I'll enhance the software to do something a little bit better. Highland is the creator of OnBase, which is a enterprise content management software. It could be used in healthcare or in banks, in higher education, so like for colleges, for financial aid, or for admissions. Basically anywhere you can think of, a company could totally use OnBase. So on a typical day, someone on my team might be like, hey, Karen, the software is acting this one way, but we think that customers would really appreciate it if it did this instead. So when I click this button, everything would just kind of stop and we would have to wait for something to pop up. But now when I click it, we get another window that pops up over here and it shows us a little bit about what's going on in the background while we're waiting for the process to finish. I've always loved puzzles and for me all of this code is just a bunch of puzzles that you have to figure out. Like when I found a bug, well I know that this is happening but why and where in the code is it happening and having to, to kind of like go through and figure out this puzzle of what is going on and how do I fix it. I, I think it's really fun and it's just like, you know, doing a Sudoku puzzle or something like that. It's really fun. I went to college at Case Western Reserve University and I got a bachelor's degree in computer science. Highland actually really loves working with Case Western Reserve University and one day I saw the Highland booth on campus so I went up and talked to them and here I am. I think programming is really cool being able to write something and then hit start and see your application be created right there and have it do exactly what you wanted it to do. It's kind of like an art form, you know? You you worked really hard on it, and now look at this thing that I've created. So that's why I like it. Uh, you could always just start up a little application and see if you can make something and see if you enjoy it. Why not? So there were some really good uh, points made there. So we're going to the next slide here. All right. So. As far as jobs available for software developers in Arizona, which is the state that we are in, it goes, uh, there's actually quite a few. Uh, taking, taking into account that Arizona isn't exactly like a software capital or the center of you know a lot of technology business uh, compared to cities like San Francisco or states like California. Uh, there's still a lot of really good jobs here like uh, Amazon, which is a huge company uh in tempe and paypal which is also a pretty well-regarded company in the world in uh scottsdale arizona so so starting off with paypal uh it's a entry-level job and uh it's again here in scottsdale arizona uh it's entry level from university meaning 12 months after you graduate you would need to work here so uh, it starts off with a 49000 to 94000 annual salary, which may not seem like a lot, but for an entry-level graduate, for someone who's just coming out of university, uh, that's actually a good amount to sustain yourself on, especially since you have no prior work experience and you're just starting off. So, Yeah, so um, like he had said in the past, it is a graduate position, meaning it does require a bachelor's in computer science or related fields and you do need like to have graduated within the 12 months because that's what it's meant for and you have to be you know familiar with modern programming languages and web APS and frameworks a lot of the which you'll learn from school and experience but it, it just kind of goes to show that there's like software engineering um, companies and different positions that people hold and that they, they, they segment for graduates. So getting a job out of graduation uh, isn't as hard as you would think it is and uh, you can really get the ball rolling within software. 
All right, so the next company is Amazon, which is a pretty, it's one of the biggest companies uh, at the time of recording this. And the job uh, title is software developer. And this position at Amazon actually requires you to be a bit more experienced than the one at PayPal. Uh, it's uh, located in Tempe, Arizona. So you'd have to go to Tempe to um, do your job. And you would you kind of require a high proficiency and a bit more experience than pay, and PayPal. So Amazon is a bit more reluctant to accept uh, university graduates straight out of university. And it would be better if you went to work at PayPal, say, for first, and then you came and applied at Amazon with a bit more experience. Uh, for Amazon, with a higher salary comes with the increased uh, expectations for work. Meaning, you know, you're you're more of a proficient programmer. You have way more experience, way more time on the field. So as a result, you have a way higher salary, and it goes from a hundred thousand dollars to one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is about a good amount to sustain yourself in a uh, medium living environment. So, yeah. So, and then um, furthermore, with the education, uh, they do uh, request a bachelor's degree in computer science as well or related field and furthermore uh there's also like an other opportunity you don't really have to just have a bachelor's they really do hold work experience to a very similar level but it's kind of a three to one ratio where for every one year of education you would need three years of computer science or three years of work experience rather so uh if you don't have the degree you would need around 12 years of uh work experience to kind of like have the equivalence so there's a little more benefit versus not to whatever situation you're in to pursue the field and what you uh, decide for your level of education. All right, so for the ed in terms of education required for computer science and software development jobs, uh, software development is actually one of those fields which doesn't really uh, strictly require a degree for you to uh, pursue a job. So it does depend from company to company. A lot of companies will hold degrees to a much higher uh, value than other jobs, say. So for in the instance of Amazon, Amazon will either accept experience or a degree uh, because really you you may get the same level of knowledge about the field from either practice. You know, if you go to school and go through a curriculum, you learn a lot about uh, computer science, the industry standards of computer science. So you have a good understanding that way. Or you could go into a job with uh, equal work and you also get more experience. You get more understanding with an actual company in the field, how they operate, what practices they use, and just how they function overall. And so you gain knowledge that way. Uh, so one of these, one of the companies that kind of favors uh, education over experience is Google. And uh, Google is actually pretty hard to get in because they almost, almost exclusively. Uh, pick Stanford graduates to come to their school. So uh, I think there was a survey or a statistic where Google, the, the overwhelming majority of Google uh, software developers graduated from Stanford. So Google and Stanford work together. And a lot of companies will actually do that where they, they, um, they work together with a school. And so in this instance, Google and Stanford works together, or in the case of Karen in the beginning of the presentation, her university worked with uh, the job that she has now. And so she was able to get a job easily uh, out of college. So uh, school, again, isn't required. There's a lot of instances of this, actually. A lot of uh, rare, but still prevalent instances, such as in the case of Bill Gates, where he didn't, he didn't finish his uh, school at Harvard. He actually dropped out and started work at Microsoft and began to start the company because he saw that going to school would be a waste of time if he could get the same, if not better, uh, knowledge and experience about the field from just starting his own company. And he obviously was very successful in that because Microsoft's one of the biggest companies today. There's also the case of Mark Zuckerberg, who uh, dropped out of Harvard and pursued uh, Facebook in his life. And now Facebook is one of the biggest uh, social networking companies to date. So uh, again, th these are just some instances of how you don't necessarily need a degree or an education in order to pursue a job in computer science, although it is reliable to get a degree. And um, yeah. 
So, um, there are many companies that hire computer science majors. Um, so many are including like Walmart, General Electric, internet companies like Google, Amazon, PayPal, the, all the ones that we've talked about, all the ones that, you know, come to mind, you know, social networks, uh, anything that's online, online banking, obviously all need software engineers because that's what their product is really based on, right? They have a, uh, an app or something that they need to have, but it's uh, kind of expanding a lot further um than just those tech firms or anything like that because it's very versatile and everyone needs an app right um if you think about like if you go to target right they have to have a target app right and there's obviously need, you need a team of software engineers to create this and you need the framework and everyone to build this so a lot of companies are hiring different people because you just kind of need somebody on staff or a team on staff to help build these products that you need to, in order to be competitive with everyone else right if your competitor has has a really you know really great website or really great app or something that they can find products much faster then you need that as well in order to stay competitive so having software engineering and having engineers uh, in general is something that is a great benefit. Uh, so with that, uh, as more and more companies are needing these types of engineers, uh, software and computer science is going to be growing around 16 to 18, uh, 16 to 18 percent from 2018 to 2028. So in the next 10 years, you know, the industry is going to grow about, you know, a fair amount. And it's it's um, seen as by uh, um, many excellent job prospects by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, meaning that it's just going to be something that's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. And all that, although the demand or the supply of software engineers is growing and growing and growing, it's slowly meeting demand and whatnot. But it's still growing at such a fast rate that the supply of people that are going into it is maybe not enough. Uh, and then the average salary of uh, computer science, uh, somebody in computer science would be a hundred, about a hundred thousand. Uh, so it's a really great industry that's just going to keep growing and getting better over time. So if you want to know more, there's a lot of places you can go in order to either pursue jobs about uh, computer science and software development. Uh, maybe jobs, you go to this glass store listing. There's a link there if you want to type that in. Um, there may be a computer science uh, graduate or a software developer engineer in um, in working right now that you may know. And if so, you may want to talk to them about, you know, what goes on in your daily life. Uh, how do you do things? How's the work environment? Uh, how's the pay? Do you live well? Uh, so there's a lot to talk about there. If you know anyone in your family or anyone close to you that you may want to talk about that, uh, I highly advise you to do so if you're looking to pursue a career in software development. Uh, you should also look at different college degree options for your university. So, for example, if you're going to ASU, you should look at the uh, master's or bachelor program in ASU for computer science just to get an idea of what they offer you in terms of computer science. And maybe if they don't exactly offer what you'd like, you can maybe look at other universities and see if they offer what you like. So really just look at different colleges for different career options or different degree options for computer science. And lastly, if you're passionate about computer science right now, you could just teach yourself to code. It's uh, fairly easy to teach yourself to code today. All really, all you need is the interest to do so. So, yeah, there's plenty of great resources out there. And then these are our sources uh, that we use for a lot of the information statistics in our uh, presentation. But thank you for coming, or thank you for watching. Uh, uh, we, yeah, uh, we love computer science, you know, uh, and I think it's a really great field and a really great engineering uh, field to study. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, All right, thank you. Thanks much. for watching. Thank you.